With the dawning of human consciousness, people began to wonder about their place on earth and in the heavens. At first, their world was the tribe and the area in which they lived. But as they explored new territory, they began to feel that there were almost limitless boundaries full of places to see and people to meet. Often the meeting of different cultures was followed by disaster. The arrival of European explorers in the New World doomed many native people to slavery, disease, and death. The proof of this kind of disruptive encounter lies in the fact that Cortez, with less than 1,000 men, managed to protect society, which numbered in excess of one million. As civilization progressed, so did our thirst for knowledge. Eventually, we mapped our planet and transformed it into farms, villages, and cities. But having conquered Earth, the question still remained. Is this all there is to explore? In most cases, religious belief stepped in to answer that question. God created heaven and Earth and formed man in his own image. The Bible, Koran, or even the Bhagavad Gita mention nothing about God creating other planets or any other life as is found on the earth. The religious answer satisfied most people. To speak otherwise was to be guilty of heresy and place the offender at risk of punishment. But as our knowledge of the universe grew, it became increasingly difficult to believe in our uniqueness. For example, we know that in our galaxy there is nothing exceptionally unusual about our sun. It is a rather indistinct star orbiting on one of the outer arms of the Milky Way. And the Milky Way is home to some 250 billion stars, any one of which may have orbiting planets. Based on direct observations of our solar system and hints we have gleaned from near stellar neighbors, it seems likely that planet formation is common in our galaxy. After all, our single star has nine planets. Of these nine planets, only Mercury and Venus lack moons. All the rest of the planets have at least one, and some, like Jupiter, have a dozen moons or more. Even tiny Pluto has a small moon. Vast numbers of smaller objects, comets, and asteroids also inhabit our solar system. If so many solid bodies were created from the swirling cloud that made our solar system, it seems reasonable to suppose that such clouds elsewhere in the galaxy would make planetary systems too. Careful observations of the nearest stars indicate about one half of them have something about the mass of a large planet orbiting them. Also, the Hubble Space Telescope recently observed that about half of the stars in a part of the galaxy called the Orion Nebula were surrounded by disks of gas and dust perhaps like the one from which our solar system formed. Such evidence leads to interesting speculation. If we presume that it is normal for stars to have a family of planets, then with a little math and some educated guessing, it may be possible for us to gauge the likelihood of life arising elsewhere in the universe. Let's suppose of the 250 billion stars in the Milky Way, half possess planets. Since our sun has nine planets, let's split the difference and say that the average number of planets for each sun is five. That would make 625 billion planets in the Milky Way. Now, let's say that of all those planets, only 10% of them are in a proper position in orbit around their respective suns so that life has a chance to arise. That brings us down to 62.5 billion planets capable of developing life. We are not yet certain how likely the development of life is on planets, but we do know from experiments that when the elements found on the primitive Earth are mixed together in a laboratory, they immediately begin to form a kind of organic goo, which we believe may be the precursor to life. But for argument's sake, let's say that it is extremely difficult for life to get started. Let's say about 1% of the world's where life could be sustained. That would leave us 
with 625 million worlds where life actually evolved in our galaxy alone. If we want to resolve this equation even farther, let's presume that on the planets where life is actually able to evolve, only one-tenth of one percent ever evolve intelligent life forms like ourselves, creatures who are capable of astronomy and space travel. Okay, Houston, uh, Sid, we've got a break right now. Uh, I would characterize debris as... Uh... Even with these pessimistic calculations, there would still be over 600 and 25,000 intelligent technical civilizations living in our galaxy alone. And you combine that with the billions of galaxies in the universe, and you can see that it is very likely that the universe is a rather busy place, teeming with life. We'll return to the Practical Guide to the Universe on the Learning Channel.